winter. Now, March is the perfect time of year to give your houseplants a little bit of TLC and to repot them before the spring growing season really starts. And that is what we're going to be doing today. So I hope you'll join me for some tips and tricks on how to keep your houseplants happy and healthy and lots and lots of houseplant goodness. First thing that you need to think about when it comes to houseplants is what houseplant you've got. If you don't know what it is, you won't be able to care for it properly. And if you think about the world of plants outside of the house, they live in all different kinds of habitats, from right up in the, the canopy in the forest, all the way down to the forest floor. Um, some of them are coastal and they live in very harsh environments, so in the desert. Some of them like to live in very temperate, very mild, very moist environments. So it's really important that you know what your houseplant is and the kind of environment that it likes to live in in the wild so that you can recreate that for them at home. This for example is a calathea um, which is a gorgeous little plant. As you can see it's got this lovely variegated foliage on the top and then underneath, if I can turn it around, it's got this kind of purpley sheen to it and this is a kind of plant that likes to live on the forest floor so it really doesn't do well in bright bright hot sunlight or really intense heat um, and so what I like to do when I have this plant on my shelf is surround it by other plants that kind of mimic that canopy effect so that the leaves kind of arch over it over the top block out most of the sunlight and let it just get kind of that filtered light that it would be getting in the wild. Another plant that likes really specific conditions is this Sarah Senior. So you can see, you've probably seen one of these before, maybe in a garden centre. They are called Sarah Seniors or pitcher plants because they've got those lovely um, leaves that form the shape of pitchers. And these are carnivorous plants, so flies and ants and other little insects will fall down in there and get um, absorbed by the plant. So it's a really interesting one to have on your windowsill. Now these in the wild are found in boggy areas. They like full sun, so really warm, really moist environment, and they like the water that they have to be coming up from the bottom of their pot. So they like to be sitting in water, like they would be if they were in a bog. So if you left this plant to dry out completely, it really wouldn't thank you and it would probably shrivel up and die. So it's really important to know where your plant comes from in the wild so that you can recreate that kind of habitat at home. The next thing to think about is how much you're going to water your plants and how often you're going to water your plants. Now this is something that a lot of beginners get a little bit wrong and they can get quite disheartened when a lot of their plants kind of die on them or end up looking a bit kind of peaky and that is over watering. So it's really tempting when you've got a plant on a shelf to continuously top it up with water, you know, keep as you, every time you walk past it, keep giving it a little sip of water because you think, oh I'm feeding it, I'm caring for it. But actually a lot of plants won't thank you for that, they really don't like to be sitting in too much water. Now a good rule is to let the surface of the compost dry out completely before you put any more water in. So I'm not saying that the whole pot should be completely dry because that would be a little bit of a, a bit of a mistake, um, but if you put your finger on the surface of the compost and it's dry then you can water, but if it comes away wet or you can still feel that there's some water in there then I'd give it a few more hours or maybe even a few days um, until that water is completely gone from the surface of the pot and then you can top it up again. Now, something that every houseplant owner should have is your trusty mister bottle. Now this is a little bit of a DIY job. This is one of those little travel bottles you can get from Boots or Superdrug. Um, and it's just a sprayer. Let's see if it works. Can you see that? No. Well, it sprays, sprays out a very fine mist of water. Now, a lot of plants like to have their leaves misted because it kind of recreates that, um, you know, the environment that they're in in the wild, where maybe the morning dew lands on them. And just the air outside is often a lot more moist than our interior air. Our interior air with the radiators and the central heating can get really dried out. So it's important to have one of these little misters and keep your plants nice and moist. Those plants like the calathea, for example, that live on the forest floor, um, and the bog plants, they really do uh, appreciate a good misting now and again. So a couple more tips and then we'll get onto the good stuff and get repotting. But first up, drainage is really important. So a lot of plants aren't like that Saracenia or that bog plant. They really don't like their roots to get waterlogged. And in particular, succulents like this Echeveria, um, they really don't like their roots to get sit in water or have sort of water stuck on them all the time um, because these plants are succulents, they like full sun um, and they like to dry out. They live in the desert in the wild. This is an echeveria that I uh, repotted a few years ago and I put it in this jam jar that doesn't have any drainage holes which is a bit of a sin um, for uh, succulents in the houseplant world. But what I did to counteract that, if you have a look inside, I put some stones 
around the bottom of the jar. And what that does is, once you put the soil in and once you put the plant on top, it just lifts the roots out of any water that might collect in the bottom after I've poured in a little bit of water. Um, and that's really important for succulents because it keeps the roots out of the wet, out of the damp, and it stops sort of root rot or them getting a little bit peaky or a little bit ill because their roots are wet. So. Do try and think about drainage when you're uh, repotting your plants, thinking about keeping their roots up out of any water that might collect in there after you've watered it. So the first plant that I'm going to be repotting is this gorgeous Dracaena or dragon tree. Now this is something that I've had uh, for a few years and I haven't repotted it in all that time and it is crying out for a new pot. So it's looking a little bit worse for wear to be honest. If you can see it's a little bit droopy uh, and it is in a tiny little pot for its size um, which I'm a little bit ashamed about but we're going to put to rights today. How to tell if your plant needs to be repotted. I mean obviously take a look at it and if it's a lot lot bigger than it's pot like this one is then it's obviously in need of a repot but something else that you can look at at the base of the pot can you see here yep the roots have started to come out of the holes at the bottom of the pot now that is a sure sign that the plant is desperate for some more space because the roots are kind of poking out searching for more nutrients more space and more soil so if that's happening then you know that your plant is in need of a repot okay so i've got my pot and as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than that last one it's a lovely shade of green it's a plastic pot which i really would recommend for indoor plants because they hold quite a lot more water um, than terracotta pots it does have some holes at the bottom which is great and I've also got a little tray or a little dish that I'm going to put it in so that uh, when I water it the water doesn't spill out all over the floor um, but let's get going let's repot my Dracaena one of the first things that you're going to need is compost now this is just communal garden compost you can get it from any garden center there are plants that like to have specific types of compost um, and you can get even specific indoor houseplant compost but I often find that um, it's very expensive for a very small bag and I get Get pretty good results with this stuff anyway so I mean I'm just gonna stick with this for today what I'm gonna do now is have a look at my Dracaena and I'm gonna take it out of its pot so I can put it in the compost so you can see gosh that is such a root bound plant so what you can do um, you can gently tease away the roots like this at the bottom and just open it out so that when it goes in the pot they're gonna be feeling a lot less pot bound or root bound and a lot more likely to spread out and get growing. And I just keep going, keep going, until it all is covered up by the new compost. Now you don't want to go too far up the stem of the plant. So you see the stems coming out of the soil here. It would be a mistake to fill up all of this pot here until you got to here, for example, and cover up a little bit more of the stem. So plants like to be where they're at. So I wouldn't bury it any deeper than it already is. So here we are with my lovely new Dracaena or dragon tree in its new pot, looking fantastic. And then the next thing, and the most important thing, is to water it. Uh, because a houseplant, once it's been transferred to a new pot, it's feeling a little bit unsure of itself and it likes to sort of settle into that pot with a nice drink of water. So make sure that you water it. And then I would really give it a few days, a few weeks even, to adjust. So, you know, imagine if you were moving house, you don't just move into your new house and then suddenly feel right bang at home. It takes a little while for houseplants often to adjust to their new surroundings, to their new pot. They might even start to look a little bit ill, they might not look a little bit unhappy, but give it time because they're just sending out those new root shoots, they're sending out, they're feeling out their new home and I'm sure they will settle in and adjust and then after that it'll be plain sailing uh, and yet you'll have a lovely healthy new house plant in its lovely new home. not just a good time to repot your existing houseplants but to propagate your houseplants as well and get some more of them. Um, so if you look at a plant like this, this is a pilia or a Chinese money plant. It's also known as pass it on plant because at the base of the plant you can see here we've got all these tiny little new plants growing uh, and people would take them out of the soil, cut them away from the mother plant and then pass them on to their friends and family and that's what we're going to do today. So from that big 
big mother plant. We've managed to make three little baby pilia plants uh, that I'm going to grow on in their pots and then pass on to my friends and family when they've got a little bit bigger. But it just goes to show uh, that houseplants don't have to be expensive. If you buy a plant like the pass it on plant or the pilia, uh, or even a spider plant, let me show you over here. So this is uh, my spider plant that's been with us for a few years and it's quite big and it's quite old. Uh, and every year it grows these little baby spider plants. So you can see you've got the main plant up here and then it grows at the end of these stems, these little baby plants. And you can even see that some of them have started to grow little roots. Uh, and what you do is you chop those off and just like we did with the pilia, you pop them into compost and they grow on into big brand new plants. And that's what I did with these two a few months ago and you can see that they're on their way to becoming as big as their mum. So as I was saying, houseplants don't have to be expensive. You can propagate your own, uh, get friends and family involved. It's a really nice way to meet other people who are into plants. Sharing plants between friends is a really cheap uh, and cheerful way to enjoy houseplants. So to end the video, I thought I'd give you a few ideas of some houseplants that might work for you. Uh, I, like a lot of you, work full time. I often work more than full time. I'm often out in the evenings and at the weekends. Uh, and that means I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to my houseplants. And a lot of the ones that I do have, they require not an awful lot of care, not an awful lot of water, uh, and not an awful lot of time. So yeah, I hope that some of them might be suitable for you. Right, yo, so first up, this is a pothos or a potos plant. Uh, and it's one that I think every home should have. Have because they are so easy. Uh, you often see them in offices um, because they really do take very little care. You can see this one's pretty dusty. I'm going to have to give it a dust later on. Um, but it doesn't take very much water. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of light. It does need some light, but not too much. And you can really just sort of let it get on with things. We've got ours on top of our bookshelf. And this one is a variegated one. Uh, so the leaves are lovely uh, mottled green, which is, which is really beautiful. So yeah, definitely look out for a pothos next time you're in the garden centre. What else have we got? This is kind of an aloe vera. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with this one. It's gone a little bit brown. It does sort of go brown and then green again and then brown again and it doesn't really matter what I do. So I'm hoping that it's going to go green again. You can see kind of in the middle here, got a bit more greenery coming through. But that one is good uh, if you've got like a really sunny windowsill or somewhere where you can put succulents. Um, here's that bog plant we were talking about earlier. This one does require a little bit more care. It doesn't really like tap water, for example. It really likes rainwater. So if you've got one of those, make sure to feed it uh, or water it with rainwater. This is a bird's nest fern, uh, which is a really lovely foliage plant. You can see why it's called a bird's nest, because right down in the middle there, uh, it looks like a little nest with these little eggs, um, which are the leaves, going to be unfurling soon. This one, again, requires really little care. Um, you can mist it every now and again with some mist, uh, make sure it's nice and um, moist in the pot. But yeah, really good plant for brightening up kind of a darker corner of your living room, maybe. Oh, behind it, we've got uh, mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant. Now this is almost indestructible. This is really crying out for uh, a repot as well. This one will do well in full sun, in not very much sun, uh, in, a, in a really dark corner, really light corner, wherever you've got in your house that you need brightening up. Uh, I would really recommend um, a mother-in-law's tongue. You really can't go wrong with this. They look great, whatever you do to them. Crowning glory. <laughs> <laughs> this is my amaryllis. So this is actually a bulb, a spring bulb, um, and it grows every year. So every year it has these gorgeous flowers on, these two beautiful bright red flowers, and then it goes over, it dies back, and then after I've let all the leaves kind of shrivel up, I will just chop it off at the base, and then it goes into the cupboard under the sink uh, for the rest of the year. And I don't water it, I don't think about it, I don't touch it, and then when it comes out again in spring, I give it a quick water, and then this is the result. If you on a plant that you literally cannot kill, um, I would go for this one. This is called cast iron plant or an aspidistra. Now this one is looking a little bit worse for wear because it's been in our bathroom for the last six months and our bathroom does not have any natural light in it whatsoever. It doesn't have a window. Um, so this is the result of six months of no light at all and I think you'll agree. I mean it's looking a little bit crispy in places um, but generally I think it looks quite good. So if you're a student and you're living in a student flat or you're living in a you know quite a small flat in London or in a city where there's not much light you don't have very big windows 
I would definitely say get a cast iron plant because you really cannot kill them. This is gorgeous. I love it so much, but I'm not sure that I'm giving it the right kind of care. So this is a wandering dew. Um, look at the purple color. It's just beautiful, beautiful. So we started off with this in full sun um, and it was doing quite well, but I thought it looked a little bit crispy. So I moved it into the living room um, and all the purple color underneath the leaves disappeared. So it all just sort of went really pale and washed out and it lost all its color. So I moved it back into the light, the brighter light again, and it seems to be really enjoying that. But we've got this kind of big stem here and then these smaller ones in this pot. So I think that might be another one to be repotted soon. But yeah, there are plenty of houseplants that you can buy um, that will do really well in whatever kind of conditions that you have. So make sure that you check out online, have a look on some houseplant websites, some garden center websites, and find the houseplant for you. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed coming along while I repotted my houseplants. I hope you learned something. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments box down below. I'm not an expert, but I really will try and answer them to the best of my ability. Um, if you've got any suggestions for houseplants that you think other people might like, then please do leave them down there as well. And if you just wanna, you know, tell me what you're up to, then leave that down there as well too. I love talking to you guys in the comments. Tell me what you're up to. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.